Hey guys, welcome back to the part 5 of this game tutorial series where we are making this platformer game. And in the previous part, we made finish line, kill zone, an obstacle for our level. And in this video, we are going to create a countdown timer system so that our player has to complete the level before we run out of the time. And before we jump in the tutorial, let me tell you, you can download this project from my Patreon where you can access all the assets and UI I use for this game along with the whole project. The link is in the description. But yet we don't have any time limit to complete this level. Like we can take forever to complete any level. And that doesn't sound fair. So we are just going to create a countdown timer. So for that, open up your content browser, go to user widget folder. And here let's create a user widget. Let's name this main hood UI. Since it is going to be a main UI that will be displayed all the time while we are playing the game. So first of all, add a canvas panel and inside this canvas panel, we are going to add the timer text. And for that, first let's add a horizontal box, drag it under the canvas panel and let's move it to the center. You can scale it according to the text size you want and then set your anchor. And then let's add a text inside this horizontal box. Let's set the text to 0, 0 and set the alignments in the center. And then you can change the font size. I'm gonna give it the size of 50. Then set the justification at the center. And let's duplicate these tags three times. And for the middle text, set it to colon. Now to use the full space of the horizontal box, select all the text and set this to fill. Now as you can see, they are quite looking like a timer. Now let's select these two text and make sure you check this is variable option. So that in the graph, you can use these text here and make logic with them. Now we can also rename these text. So select and press F2. Let's name this one minute underscore text. And this one second underscore text. Now let's compile and go to graph. Let's delete unnecessary events. Now here first of all we are going to create some variables. So add a variable. Let's name this minutes. And set the variable type to integer. Now create another variable and name this seconds. Make sure it's an integer too, compile and their name says it all, what kind of value they're gonna carry. Let's create a custom event and name this start countdown. So in this custom event, we are going to add input parameters. So here click on this plus icon. Let's name this parameter minutes and set the variable type to integer. Then add another one and name this seconds. So now this custom event carries these two parameters through which we can receive values. So if we call this custom event like this and we can send some value through this custom event like 2 minutes and 30 seconds. And these value will be received here on their respective parameter. Now we are going to store these parameter values into these variables. The minutes value goes into the minutes variable and seconds goes into seconds variable. And this is how we gonna receive the timer start value into these variables. Now after this, get set timer by event and I'll explain you what this do. But before that, from this event, create a custom event. Let's call this update countdown. Now here set time to 1 and check this looping. Now what is this doing is, it will call this event again and again every 1 second in a loop. So as this event will be called every 1 second, we are going to update this text every time we call that event, means every single seconds. That's for the timer do, right? So get a branch here. Now first of all, we are going to get the seconds and check if it is already equals to zero. Now what if it is not? That means this seconds text can be 59, 20 or even 1. So let's say if it is 59, then we are just going to subtract 1 so that it will be 58 the next second. And then 57, 56, 55, we just need to keep subtracting every second. So just subtract the seconds by 1. And then store the new subtracted value. And we are doing this every single second. I hope it makes sense. And now we need to update our seconds text. So get the seconds text and we are going to set this text to what this value is. And to change the text, search for set text. There it is. Now this is an integer value. So first let's convert it to text and plug this return value here. Now set this minimum integral digits to 2 so that this text will carry 2 digits even if the value is less than 10. And the maximum digits are also going to be 2. Now what if the seconds value reaches 0? So then what we are going to do is get a branch here 
So then we are going to check if our minutes is equals to zero. So if it is false and here our seconds are equals to zero, that just means we need to subtract the minute. So here set the minutes and subtracted by one. And we are also going to reset the seconds back to 59. Now how does that work is, so according to that condition, our seconds are equals to zero, but our minutes are not. So let's just assume our minutes value is one. So we are subtracting it and resetting our seconds back to 59. See, it makes sense. So this is how we update our minutes and seconds in this condition. But now we need to update the text. So let's just quickly duplicate this set text. And first we are gonna update seconds. Also duplicate this to text. Connect the return value here. And here for the value, plug the seconds. Just like how we update the seconds before, we are doing the same here. Then duplicate this. And we are going to update the minutes text here. And for the value, plug this minutes variable. There you go. And now what if the seconds is equals to zero and minutes is also equals to zero. That just means our countdown has been finished and we have reached zero minutes and zero seconds. In that case, we are just going to display this game over widget to the user. So create a widget. And here select that game over UI, then add it to the viewport. And then get player controller. And through this set input mode to UI only. And then set show mouse cursor. And check this box to show the mouse cursor. And after this, we are going to destroy our character. Means removing it from the level. So get player character. And destroy actor. Alright, as we show this game over UI, then we are going to remove this main hood UI. So search for remove from parent and the target is going to be self. Now the most important thing, we need to stop this timer. Otherwise it will keep calling this event every one second again and again. So to stop this timer from the return value, search for clear and you will get this clear and invalidate timer handle. Click alt to remove this pin and plug it here. So now we are done with this timer system. Now compile and now we need to create this main hood UI to display it to our player. And since this UI gonna persist with the player the whole time when we are playing, so we are going to create this widget in our game mode. So just go to your game mode. We are using my game mode, which we created earlier and open this up. Now go to event graph and here on the event begin play, we are going to create that main hood UI. So create widget. And here select that main hood UI and then add it to the viewport. There you go. Now let's compile. And now if we play, here you'll see we have that timer on the top, but it's not working. Why is that? So the reason is simple. We haven't called this custom event yet. And to start the timer, we need to call this custom event like this. But where are we going to call this? Well, we can call this in the game mode since we are creating this widget here, but the timer is going to be different for each level according to how big or difficult that level is. But here the problem is that we are going to use the same game mode for every and each level. And if you call that event in the game mode, the timer value is going to be the same for each level. So we need something that is different for each level. So we are going to use level blueprint to call that event. So from here, you can open up your level blueprint and here on the event begin play, we are going to start the timer. Now we are creating a main hood UI in the my game mode. So first we need to store this reference so that we can use this in another blueprint. So right click and promote this to variable and let's name this main hood UI. Now let's compile and go to our level blueprint. Now here first we need to cast to our game mode. So get game mode and through this cast to my game mode so that we can access this reference to access that start timer event. So cast to my game mode and through the cast we can access this main hood UI reference. So get main hood UI and through this reference we can call this event. So call the start countdown event. There you go. And here we need to give it the minutes and seconds value. Let's set the timer to one minute. Now compile and let's play. Now as you can see, the one minute timer has been started. So let's see if we can finish this level before the timer runs out. 
there you can see we can easily finish the level before the timer runs out if you want you can also reduce the timer but i think one minute is fine for the first level now let's just wait for the timer to get zero There you go, as you can see, we got this game over UI displayed to the player when the time runs out. However, the text should be time over instead of game over, so we will also fix that. Now here we can click on this retry and the timer starts again. Now here in the game over UI, we wanna set the text to time over when the time runs out and the game over when we fell off. We'll do that in a second, but before that, I want you to notice something about the timer. When we press play, at the very beginning the timer is 0 0. Let me show you again. Here, you saw that? The timer must be 1 minute 0 seconds but instead it's 0 minute 0 seconds. Now that is happening because here we are setting the values of minutes and seconds but we are not updating the text before we even start the timer. So let's make some space here. And this is how we update the text. So let's just quickly copy this and just plug it here before we even start the timer. So now the issue must have been fixed. So let's play and see that. There you see, now the timer works perfectly fine. Now what about this text? We want it to change into time over when the timer runs out. And this way we don't have to create two separate widgets for game over and time over. Now first make sure you check this is variable option from here so that you can access it in the graph. Now on the event construct we are going to set this text and event construct just works like event begin play in user widget. Now before that let me rename this text to game over text. Now come back to graph and here get game over text and then search for set text. Now right click and promote this to variable and let's name this variable default text. Now compile and down here you can set the default value for this text which is game over. Now in the main hood UI when the time runs out we create this game over UI and this is where we want to change this text to time over. So to do that what we can do is select this default text variable we just created and in the details panel check this instant editable and expose on spawn. Now compile. Now what this will do is if you go to main hood UI where you are creating this widget and now when you right click and refresh this node now you can see that you can change this default text variable directly from here. So let's set this to time over. So now when the timer runs out it will set the text to time over. So let's hit play and wait for the timer to run out. And the time runs out and it says time over. So it means it's working perfectly fine. And when we jump out, it says game over. So without creating separate widgets for both of them, we made the text change depending on how the game ends. Now if you notice something here, the main hood UI is still there and the timer is still running even though we fell off and the game is over. So we'll have to remove this widget. And also we have the same problem when we finish the level. Let me show you. There you can see the main hood UI is still there and the timer is still running. So to fix that, go to your finish level BP and here after we display the level finish UI, we are going to remove this main hood UI. Now to remove it, first as we know, we have created this main hood UI in my game mode and its reference exists here. So in order to remove this widget, we first need to cast to a my game to access that reference and then we will be able to remove this widget. So through the get game mode, cast to my game mode and then we can access the reference of main hood UI and through this reference, we can remove it from the parent. Now this is the first way of doing this and there is another way of doing the same thing and that is you can get all widgets of class and here you have to select your and here you will select the widget that you want it to find and from this found widget array you can get a copy which will give you the first reference it finds of this widget and then we are going to remove it from the parent. So this method is useful when you don't have the reference of the widget that you want to access. So this will find one for you. And in this second one, we knew that we had the reference of main hood UI in my game mode. So you can do it the both way. I'm going with the above one. Now when we overlap with the skill zone, then also we are going to remove the main hood UI. So go to kill ZBP and when we overlap with this, then here we are going to remove the main hood UI. And this time we are going with this casting method just to show you that both of them works. So let's play and test this. Here let's jump off and here you see there is no main hood UI in the background. Now let's test for the level finish UI. 
there you can see there is no main hood ui either so that is it for this part of our game tutorial series and in the next part we are going to create in-game currency for our game so if you like this video you can support me on patreon where you can access this game project file and all the assets i've used for this game the link is in the description and you can also join our discord server where you can interact with other developers of this community and if this video helped you out and make sure to like and subscribe to my youtube channel and i want to thank patreon members of this month thank you so much for your support it means a lot till then see you bye bye